everyone. I am Ayushi Agarwal, Assistant Professor for Computer Science and Engineering Department of ABS Engineering College, Gazeba. Today in this video lecture, I'll be discussing about how you can convert an NFA to a DFA. So we'll discuss about the conversion process of NFA to DFA and various steps involved in converting an NFA to a DFA. And this way, we will also identify that why we are not discussing about or why we are not talking about conversion of a DFA to an NFA. That is, vice versa process is not possible when we are just talking about a conversion on an, an NFA to a DFA. So in previous video lecture or uh, if we talk about NFA, we have discussed about it as like every NFA is not DFA, but an NFA can be converted into a DFA. So we have identified various properties and various uh, uh, graphical difference between NFA and DFA, various conceptual difference between NFA and DFA also. Now, we are going to talk about how we can convert an NFA to a DFA. So what does this means? This means that for any given NFA, there can be an equivalent DFA possible. Why it is possible? Because we are stating that an NFA is not DFA, but we can translate it. We can convert it to a DFA. So DFA is basically any basic transition diagram or transition machine or finite automation machine that accepts your language or that accepts your queries, that accepts your uh, data. So for an NFA conversion to DFA means you are going to draw an equivalent DFA. That is what is stated over here that you need to draw an equivalent DFA for a given NFA. So a small definition is stated over here that let M, M is such kind of a tuple machine, which is an NFA, which accepts a language LM. LM basically means any particular string or any particular question statement based on which you have identified some set of strings, which will be, which can be accepted by a particular NFA. For that NFA, you need to draw an equivalent DFA. That is, we are denoting it with M dash. And every symbol of M dash is represented with dash only. So to identify that, we are talking about an equivalent DFA. So basically, we are going to state an LM, which is an NFA, have an equivalent DFA, that is LM dash. Now, directly, let's move on to the conversion process, how we can convert an NFA to a DFA. So, over here, we can see that this is an NFA or non-deterministic finite automation transition diagram shown over here. So, we'll see step by step how we can convert this given NFA to a DFA. So our first step for in doing any question where you are converting an NFA to a DFA is, first of all, draw the transition table for the given NFA. First step in hand is draw transition table for the given NFA. Okay, now let's draw the transition table for this given NFA. We have three states over here. First of all, by viewing the transition diagram, try to identify which is the initial state, which is a final state, and then start drawing the transition table. So over here, you can see that Q1 state is having an empty arrow over here. So obviously, this is the start state. And uh, since Q3 is uh, encircled with double circle, so obviously we can say that this is our final state. 
and Q2 is our some intermediate state. So this way we can identify our initial state and final state. Now let's draw the transition table and let's move on how we can convert an NFA to a DFA. So let's draw that. Transitions with zero and one, four states, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Over here, Q1 is our initial state, Q3 is our final state, and Q2 is some intermediate state. So now Q1 by reading 0 is coming to state Q1. By reading 1, it is going to state Q2. From Q2, by reading 0, it is going to two states. First, we'll write Q2. Then next state it is going to q3 now by reading one it is going to state q2 now come moving count to state q3 by from q3 by reading zero it is coming back to state q3 so it's q3 by reading one it is moving to two states one is uh, is a self loop coming back to q3 and another one is it is going to back to state q2 so we'll mention like this uh q2 and q3 so this is a transition table for the given nfa once you have identified the transition table with the help of this transition table we'll further work upon it and we'll convert this given nfa to a dfa okay now again we will create one more transition table which will be the equivalent transition table for this nfa transition table and that equivalent transition table which we are going to draw now is for required dfa kindly follow me accordingly and Try to understand the steps, how we are converting. Now, once we have done with the transition table construction for the given NFA, let's move on to another transition table, which will be the equivalent transition table for our required DFA. So our first transaction will be the same since we must be have a starting state and starting state for the NFA and for the equivalent DFA must be the same. So this particular first transaction will remain the same. So just copy it out in your equivalent transition table of DFA. So need, no need to convert it, just draw it as it is. Okay, now identify the states look at the transition states after reading the transitions with 0 and 1 check the states to where it is going it is going to state q1 and it is going to state q2 we are reading the state q1 already so among these states from transition 0 and 1 which is the new state q2 is the new state why Q1 is not the new state? Because we are working on state Q1. From Q1 by reading 0 coming back to Q1. And by re reading 1 it is going to state Q2. So Q2 is the new state. So what we need to identify is. We need to identify a new set of states or a new state. So over here Q2 is a new state. So we will have the transition for state q2 so now let's write over here q2 and now let's see where it is going from q2 we need to check in the diagram from q2 with input 0 it is going to q2 and q3 so write over here q2 and q3 with input 1 it is coming back to state q2 now you have these states q2 comma q3 and q2 you are already working on state q2 so this is not the new state 
our new state is q2 comma q3 right now we are writing it in brackets or we are writing it together that means q2 comma q3 we will read it as a new state new common state q2 comma q3 is a new state we will visualize it as a state so our new state over here is now q2 comma q3 now q2 comma q3 now over here we will have transaction uh, transaction combinations for zero and one input for both the states q2 and q3 together from q2 by reading zero it is going to state q2 and q3 and from q3 it is going to by reading zero it is going back to state q3 q3 we have already written over here so need not to write it again so we will just keep it as q2 and q3 now by reading one from state q2 it is going to state q2 coming to the state q3 by reading one it is coming back to state q3 and it is also going to state q2 so q2 we have already written although we have written with for corresponding state while we are reading for q2 but since we have written already q2 we will not repeat it again we will read it similarly or we can read the same for q3 also so for q3 going by reading one going to q2 we have already written for reading one it is also going to state q3 so just mention over here q3 now we can see that we have no new state or no new combination of state q2 and q3 we have already read meant by reading q2 q3 again we are getting the combination of states as q2 and q3 so no new state is identified now so that means we need to stop over here so from this we we come to a conclusion or we come to a scenario that how we need to work for constructing an equivalent dfa transaction table for corresponding nfa transaction table is first transaction will be will remain the same first transaction will remain the same as the initial state must be the same for nfa and its equivalent dfa from that transaction identify a new state over here we have q2 q2 is a new state suppose let's say if i must have over here let's say if i have q3 over here if not for this scenario i'm just letting suppose we say that agar mere paas yahan pe q3 hota suppose let's say so over here we have two new states q3 and q2 so first we will read q2 then we can read q3 or you can read q3 then you can move to state q2 but it is not required over here so we will directly move to the state q2 so q2 you have read by reading q2 you have identified these combination of states for q2 you identified that with by reading one you are again getting q2 so need not to repeat it again we have a new combination of states that is q2 and q3 so this is our new state or new combination of a state so we will take this as an input and we will have transaction combinations of this new state this is our new state now so q2 comma q3 is our new state by having this we have combination it as q2 um, uh, comma q3 again with one it is again q2 comma q3 now how we can identify that we need to stop once you get all the transactions same or transaction combination same as you have read previous so over here no new transaction combination we have achieved that means we need to stop over here but for example if i say if i get over here some combination as q1 q2 and q3 suppose let's say by reading one i'll get combination this this is let's say okay this is not coming over here we are just assuming over here right so in that case this will be our new combination and we will start reading according to this new state so this will be added over here and then we will have some combination of states and then if we have the same 
and no new state is identified in that case, then we will stop. But over here, since it is not required, we came to a point where we get the same combination of states Q2 and Q3. So need not to move further. We have drawn an equivalent transition table for the given NFA, right? Now with corresponding to this transaction table, we will draw our equivalent DFA. Now let's draw this again further. What we have got with 0 and with 1, we have states Q1, we have state Q2, and we have state Q3. For Q1, you got Q1 over here and Q2. For over here, you got Q3 and Q2. You over here, you got Q2 and Let's check once if we have written it right or wrong. Yes, right. Now, we have already identified that Q1 is our initial state. As we have stated, the state should be the same for NFA and DFA, right? Now, let's identify which will be our final state. See over here, we have final state as Q3 because we have identified or we have uh, marked it with the star over here. And in our transition diagram also, we can see that it is encircled with double circle. So obviously Q3 is our final state. But in our equivalent DFA transaction table, how we will identify that which state should be our or which combination of state should be our final state? So over here, you know that Q3 is a state which should be our final state. So in the table where the input state consists of the final state, that particular combination will be considered as our final state. So over here, so over here, Q3, oh, sorry, Q2 comma Q3, will together create our final state, right? So this is how we can identify which pair of state or which state will be our final state. Now, what we can do is now we will draw an equivalent DFA diagram with corresponding to this transaction table. Let's see how we can do that. Q1 is our initial state. By reading 0, it is coming to state Q1 and by reading 1, it is going to state Q2. From Q2, by having input 0, it is going to the state Q2, comma Q3, which is our final state. And by reading 1, it is coming to state Q2. From Q2, comma Q3, by reading 0 and 1, it is going back to our state Q2, comma Q3. So this is our equivalent DFA for the given NFA. We can also name this particular uh, table or this particular transaction diagram with other variables also for easy understanding. We can name or rename as rename variables of states that means we are naming the states again so what we can name as a q1 as a we can name it q2 let's say we name it with b and a q2 comma q3 let's name it with c so we can redraw this particular diagram as Just we are renaming the states. That's it. We are not doing any new work over here. Just for simplification and just for drawing it clearly and for better understanding, we have just drawn it like this. So this is our required or equivalent DFA for the given NFA in this particular question. So that's how we convert an NFA to DFA. So let me resume the steps once more with you all. So once you get the NFA you and you need to convert it to DFA, first draw the transaction table for the given NFA. 
for the uh, drawn transaction table corresponding to the given NFA, draw an equivalent transaction table for DFA. How you will draw it? First transaction will remain the same. Identify the new state. And with that new state, identify the combination of states or state that is possible. And from that, again, identify the new state and so on, move so on. Until then, you need to work on it. Once you get all the transaction combinations and stop there. You will not stop working on it until unless you are getting new, new combinations of state. So how you need to stop working on it once you cover all the state and you are not getting any new state further or combination of states further till then you need to work and then you will stop drawing the equivalent transition table. From that equivalent transition table of DFA, identify which will be the initial state, which will be the final state. So initial, initial state must be the same for NFA and DFA. And for final state, you need to identify which is the final state in your NFA and the combination of state which you are getting, wherever that particular state is lying, that particular state will be your final state in your equivalent DFA. Draw the corresponding DFA like this and you can rename the variables also like this. And this is your equivalent DFA for required NFA. Right. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much.